Now, design thinking is a fundamental process in both design and technologies and in um, digital technologies. Design thinking as framed in the Australian curriculum is essentially the design process whereby students go through a series of um, elements in order to come up with a design solution to a problem. Design thinking itself can be broader than that. It can explore a range of different conceptualizations we have around the idea that the world exists as a designed um, environment that we have created as human beings. We have created various environments to live in. We've created various processes of making food and of looking after animals in order to be able to sustain ourselves. We've created uh, transportation systems and so forth. And this has all been designed intentionally by us as human beings. So the world is a designed place. Um, we have that as a difference to the natural world, whereby we might go out into a rainforest, which hasn't been designed. It exists in its natural form. But some of our rainforests, we've designed paths and stairs and um, walkways and so forth to allow us to go in a designed way into a natural environment. But the world is a designed environment and students understanding that is an important part of design thinking. Now, in terms of how that plays out in the technology subjects, we look at it through a design process whereby students approach solving problems by going through a series of techniques and skills to enable them to better solve those problems. Now, the first of these is around investigating and defining. So exploring the problem that they're um, looking at and trying to define what that problem is. Um, so we were looking before at the millennial goals. So they represent various large scale problems. Um, they can often help us contextualize smaller problems for students. Say, um, a large scale problem, problem of overpopulation might be on a small scale, be looking at the difficulty of, um, of um, drop offs at schools where there's too many parents and too many children wanting to be dropped off at once at the school gate and having that cause um, potential danger for traffic accidents or, and other issues. So the students might looking, be looking at that as a problem and trying to come up with an understanding of why it is a problem. And that would be part of an investigatory process. They might look at um, other areas where we have large populations needing to be transported. So say they might look at um, a railway system and looking at how we've got solutions for moving lots of people through using railways. Not to say that they're going to use railways as a solution uh, for dropping off students at school, but they could look at different mechanisms being used around that, such as scheduling and having different tracks of transportation. So not everyone is coming in on the same path. Um, there's a whole range of different ways that they could explore that solution and apply it to a problem of student drop-offs. So defining their problem as one of um, reducing the potential for accidents at student drop-offs may be what they come up with as their particular problem they're going to explore, having investigated the whole range of different issues around that particular circumstance. Then they will go through a process of generating and designing. So this is essentially, now they understand their problem. And in some cases, particularly for our younger students, you might give them the problem. You might not have them do the investigating and defining stages. Um, and you will provide them with the problem that they are to solve. So you'll go straight to generating and designing. But once they're in the generating and designing phase, they come up with as many different solutions as they can to the problem. So it's not about picking which one they're going to do at the stage. It's trying to brainstorm and come up with lots and lots of different ideas, lots of different um, possible solutions, that's the generating aspect, and designing them into possible solutions. So just coming off an idea is the first step. So we might say, 
um, let's say we're making a tall tower and we, we want to make the tower as tall as possible. Um, we might decide to try to make it with balloons holding it up or having a strong central core or having very large bracing buttresses. Um, these are all possible solutions. And then they would go, that would be part of the generating phase. Then they would design them. Okay, how much resources would it take to build all of these buttresses to hold it up? Okay, we may not have that many resources. Are we allowed to use balloons to hold it up? Okay, we may not be allowed to do that. It's, it's, that's not practical. Um, so there's a whole range of different things that would be part of the design process, looking at what's achievable with the resources and the techniques that they have. Then once they've got all of their different ideas and designs, they'll make a decision as to which of those they think has got the best likelihood of success. And that is what they will then produce or implement. So they'll put it into practice. So they'll either make it or they'll, if it's say it's a computer game, they'll implement the game and so forth. We use similar terminology for producing and implementing. But it's the process of actually making the solution. So coming up with the solutions is one stage, the designing and generating and designing. Making the solutions is producing and implementing. Once it's made, they then need to test and evaluate it. Testing is seeing whether or not it actually achieves the um, desired result, uh, or if it fails. Uh, say, if it's a bridge, it might collapse. Um, it just wasn't able to hold the weight across that particular span. Evaluating is when we've got a solution, how, how well does it meet the design requirements, which we set in place when we um, investigated and defined the problem. So testing and evaluating are very similar, but are slightly different in terms of their focus. Generally, we have to test in order to be able to evaluate. But an evaluation is a judgment based on the testing as to how effective the solution is. And we might decide it's not that great a solution. It is effective, it does meet the requirements, but we think we could do better. And that's when we would go through the iterative process. We would go back and we'd come up with some new ideas, new designs. We may even go all the way back to redefining the problem. Uh, we might decide, oh, we, we could actually solve more than just that initial problem. Or it may be that initial problem was too hard to solve. We've got to reduce it down and redefine it to what something we can solve. And then we would work through the whole cycle again and then test and evaluate the next iteration of our solutions. So that's the process of going through an iterative design cycle. Now, students can apply that in a whole range of different aspects of their lives. It doesn't have to be around a technologies project. It might be trying to decide what movie to go to. They could come up with different ideas. Um, we could go to the drive-in. We could go to watch it at home on um, the computer. We could go to the movies. There could be a whole range of different possible solutions to that um, idea of going to the movies, which is the problem that they may have. And it might also include what sorts of movies to see. Um, do we have enough time? Um, have we got enough money to do it in different ways and different pro uh, possible solutions? That's all going through using design thinking to solve a problem. And students can apply that in lots of different circumstances in their lives. Now, I've given you a range of different examples of where design thinking is used in projects in schools um, at different year levels and so forth. So look at these video clips and see if you can then come up with your own design challenge that you could do with students. And in particular, I want you to think about, once you've got that idea, how is it going to develop in them the different stages of the design thinking and the design process? How will it allow them to investigate and define the problem? How would it allow them to generate and design their solution? Will it allow them to produce and implement their design? Will they be able to test and evaluate their solution? Will it enable them to work collaboratively and manage the design process? And most importantly, will it allow them to have an iterative design cycle and go back and make improvements based upon their first draft of their design solution? So think about a problem and come up with how your lesson to do with that 
would be able to address those various steps.